We're on to the next step of working at otter hides. We're in the basement right now. I don't have water plumbed out to my fur shed, so we're working in the basement in the spare bathroom, but it's as good a place as any. I have some water ready. We're going to get the otter hide that I freeze scraped off of the stretcher and get it into the brain solution. We don't want it too dried out. Well, it's still damp. That's a good time for it to soak up the uh, brain solution nicely. So you can see if you stretch it a little bit, it turns white. That'll open up the fibers, the pores of the hide nicely. So it'll start to uh, soak up the brain solution right away. Now this hide, again, is one that um, I actually rehydrated. It was a dried hide like this. Uh, I didn't trap this otter. I got it from somebody in Missouri. Uh, I found a contact, I think it was on trapperman.com. And uh, they had some otter hides available. I bought several of them. So he had them already processed and ready to go uh, for the fur buyer. But instead of sending them to the fur buyer or the fur auction, which didn't happen last year, uh, I was able to buy some from them and work on some projects myself. And just take this a quick second here to, again, you can see stretch open the fibers of the hide. It's also good you can do this when the hide is submerged in the brain solution, and that works really well also. This nice white color is good. Now, um, in another video, I'm going to go over a little bit about how I rehydrated the hides. Both this flint dried and one that I had fleshed myself and salted. Uh, a couple of the hides that he sent me were still in the raw and not um, fleshed and stretched. So I uh, had to take some time to do that, which was fine. Give me some good experience with uh, fleshing the otter hides. But I know that if I'm going to tan something, I like to go ahead and salt it down. Because I feel like um, the hide rehydrates a little bit better when you do that. So this is looking pretty good. That's good enough for now. I'm going to set this aside and get the brain solution ready. I've already added some warm water into the bucket down here and let's do just one more. Make sure we have enough to submerge the hide. And I uh, gather the brains that I use just from the deer and antelope that I hunt. And it actually looks more like this. I take them out of the skull. When I cut it open, just put them in a, a baggie, label them, put them in the freezer. When I'm ready to use them, I'll pull them out and soak them in some warm water and just take time to basically mush them up in the bag. And uh, you can cook the brains if you want to. You don't have to. I usually do that to uh, make sure you kill any bacteria. I usually do put them in hot water to heat them up. Um, but again, if you boil your brains in another pot on the stove or a wood stove outside or something, make sure that the water then that you put the hide in with the brains is not too hot. So I've mushed it up. I'm going to go ahead and put some in here. and get that mixed up. I'm going to submerge the brains completely, or the hide completely in the brain solution. So I'm gonna turn that inside out. Again, let the warm water, and it's definitely not too hot, I can keep my hands in there. Let the warm water um, mix up the brains and warm them up, and I'm just gonna dunk the whole hide in there. As this soaks up the brain solution, I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. Keep stretching the hide a little bit. Let it soak up the brains. You can keep it in here for a couple of hours before you pull it out and wring it out and start to soften. If you can't get to doing the softening and final process right away, you can easily, Pull it out, put it in a plastic bag, and put it in the freezer. 
as you let it freeze with the brain solution on, that actually, again, can really help because it stretches the fibers while the brain solution is in there, helps with good penetration of the brains into the solution. But I'm gonna leave this soak for a bit, keep coming back and stirring it and stretching it over the next couple hours. And then I'll move on to the next step, which is, um, again, softening, which I'll get back to in a different video. Thanks for watching.